And if not, I'm about to teach you something right now because trivia is coming up in 13 minutes, which means I've got a trivia answer to give away for you tuning in early. So this is how this is gonna work. I'm going to give you question eight. You're gonna to attempt to answer it, and then I'm gonna reveal the correct answer. This is for no points or money. This is just like a practice question to get you warmed up, but it is the question eight from tonight's game. So let's do it. Let's see if you know the answer to this one, all right? The largest airport in the US by size is in the same state where which of the following movies takes place? Big, Dumb and Dumber, Super Bad. The largest airport in the US by size is in the same state where which of the following movies takes place? Big, Dumb and Dumber, Super Bad. Okay, we're not talking volume, we're not talking busiest, we are talking square footage, right? How big is it? So you have to know which state's airport is the biggest and then which movie takes place there. Let's see how all of you do. Ooh, we're pretty even on this one tonight. And uh, I will say this, this is your hint. If you get this question correct, you are the opposite of this movie title. Do you like that? Is that a good hint? If you get this question correct, you are opposite of this movie title. That would mean that you are smart and smarter. The answer is indeed dumb and dumber. 41% of you got that. Uh, we're talking Denver, folks. Denver is the largest airport. So anybody been there? Is it a nice airport? I'm curious. I've never been to Denver. I've never been to Colorado. Maybe I'll check out World Traveling to see some photos and content from Colorado. If you got that, let me know. Shout yourselves out in the chat. Let me know how you got it. If you've been there or you're just a lucky guest, have you seen Dumb and Dumber? If you haven't seen Dumb and Dumber, have you been living under a rock would be my follow-up question. Chico99FB got it. I'm gonna take most arrows thumbs up as most arrow getting that question. Awesome, we're set, you're set for question eight tonight. So again, you don't have to get all 10 questions and trivia correct in order to earn money on this app. Like we mentioned earlier, you can earn just by posting. So I wanna take a moment Hello, and welcome to another all new game of Display Trivia Live from New York City. That never gets old. And you know what? Neither does Taco Tuesday. You know, it does not matter where you are in the world on Tuesdays, a taco is always the move, right? And like, honestly, why stop with just a taco? Can I get some chips and salsa with that too? Like, a side of rice and beans perhaps? Oh, ooh, and um, a margarita please, but hold the margarita, just the salt. Yeah, yeah, these tacos, they need a little extra. Wait, is there a fire in the kitchen? Oh, no, that is just the sweet, sweet smoke of fajitas. Wait, are we sure that's not a fire? Folks, Taco Tuesday is not for the faint of heart. It's no amateur hour. And you know what? Neither is trivia. You showed up with Tabasco in your sleeve because it's time to play. So here's how it's going to go down. You'll have 10 seconds to answer 10 questions each. When a new question appears on your screen, choose carefully because once you tap no going back if you get one wrong keep playing for fun make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi that you're holding your phone vertically and finally your winnings will appear in your display bank account if you're actively posting and have your profile all set up okay I want to make we're all ready so let's do a quick practice question to whet your appetite tell me would you rather mild queso medium soft drink or hot dog, hot dog, hot dog. Did you know that the word for hot dog in Japanese is hot dog? It's true. And hamburger is hanbaga, and orange juice is orange juice. Yeah, I just I always loved that. Um, but it looks like 44% of you love mild queso. You know? Well, who's ready to get some money for that extra guac and mild queso? because it's time for Display Trivia. Question one. Which of the following names starts with M? Shannon, Catherine, Molly. Which of the following names starts with M? Shannon, Catherine, Molly. Hmm. 
Oh, names, names. But we all know it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Like take the, the tortoise and the hare. The hare is so confident, he takes a nap halfway through and he wakes up to find the tortoise crossing the finish line. Don't be a hare, okay? Especially not in trivia. If you are napping in trivia, you are 100% gonna miss that 10 second window of tapping the right answer. But the name Molly starts with an M and ends with the Y. We only ask the starting part. And speaking of starts, 97% of you are off to a strong one. Question two. A cube is the name of a shape in which dimensional space, 1D, 2D, 3D. A cube is the name of a shape in which dimensional space, 1D, 2D, 3D. Ooh, uh, are shapes going to space now? I wonder how much their tickets are. Hmm. I mean, honestly, of all the shapes, I do think cube takes the cake. Case in point, hello, cake. I mean, a lot of times it comes in the shape of a, a what? That's right, a cube. The other time that we see cubes absolutely slaying the game, cheese, you know? Nothing says cubes are friends, not foes, like manifesting as little pieces of cheddar jack. Mmm, so good. The only cube that needs to lay off a little bit is um, oof, the Rubik's cube. Yeah. I think, I think that you probably understand what a cube is from that, but if you want more clarification, a cube is defined as a three-dimensional solid object bounded by six square faces, blah, blah, blah. 94% of you knew it. Question three. Megan Fox said she chooses this person as her partner in every lifetime during her recent engagement. Machine Rose. Megan Fox said this person as her partner in every lifetime during her recent engagement. Machine Gun Kelly, Vanilla Ice, Axl Rose. Oh, love. Isn't it great? That wasn't sarcastic. I, I love love. But, you know, this kind of love almost exceeds love, though. Or is it, like, just outside the box altogether? Because Megan Fox says she and this person are twin flames. I mean, aren't... Aren't all flames twins kind of? I, I can barely tell them apart. Also, she says that they find each other in every lifetime. Like, every single lifetime. Okay, but like, what if Machine Gun Kelly gets reincarnated as a bacterium? Like, how would that romance work? I have questions. I have a lot of questions. But 95% of you got the answer. Question four. All of the following animals have anatomical marsupia except kangaroo, badger, possum. All of the following animals have anatomical marsupia except kangaroo, badger, or possum. I did it, I said the O, damn it. <sighs> I couldn't resist the O. Can I be honest though? You know, I'm always confusing anatomical with astronomical. Also, astronomy and astrology. Like, I know they both deal with planets and stars, but only one works as an excuse when I forget to send a really important email. <laughs> Mercury in retrograde. We don't have that excuse till May again, though, by the way. Um, and cosmo cos cosmology and cosmetology, those are the same. And they're the science of crafting the perfect cosmo. <laughs> Cheers, ladies. The point is, can't we just make words more simple, Sim simpler, more simpler, er, all right, that's it. Marsupials have pouches and a badger does not. Now, the real question is, am I a marsupial if I carry my cat in my hoodie? Asking for myself. And uh, I'll ask you the next question now. Yes, I will. Question five. Which of the following is not an example of oxymoron? Sweet sorrow, awfully good, pretty cool. Which of the following is not an example of oxymoron? Sweet sorrow, awfully good, pretty cool. Oh yeah, mm-hmm, oxymoron, yeah. Like the stuff Billy Mays sold. That guy was a genius at what he did. He could sell water to a fish, sneakers to a runner, Theranos to Walgreens. Oh wait, you know what? I might be confusing, yeah, I might be, conf I might be the oxymoron because I confused OxyClean with Oxymoron. Hmm. One makes your whites whiter and your whites brighter, while the other is a liquid device where you combine two contrasting things to make a new meaning. Pretty cool, right? Well, yeah, but pretty cool, it, it's actually not one of them. It's not, 90% 90, 90 of you got that too. 
halfway there. Questions? Heinkel Hay 178 was the first successful model of the machine currently used by which company? JetBlue, Kellogg's, Singer. Heinkel Hay 178 was the first successful model of the machine currently used by which company? JetBlue, Kellogg's, Singer. Machines, man, machines. You know, we gotta be on the lookout for them because not only are they constantly breaking, just to screw with us, I'm looking, I'm looking at your laser printer. But they're also, they're gonna rise up and they're gonna take our jobs as well as become our overlords, pretty much. Heck, I think even the simple machines, you know, the levers, the pulleys, the wheel and axle, which is why it's so important to be nice to your machines. Always say please and thank you. Say please and thank you to Siri. You know, she's gonna report back to the motherboard. Give your microwave a massage every once in a while. The Heinkel Hay 178 was the world's first aircraft to fly under turbojet power, and therein lies your answer. Therein. I love that word. 86% of you got it. Question seven. All of the following are considered general field awards for music's biggest night, except best album, best record, best video. All of the following are considered general field awards for music's biggest night, except best album, best record, best video we just had music's biggest night you know the grammys but is it is it really the biggest is it really because my fifth grade karaoke party was kind of a big deal also why are we so obsessed with size you know bigger's not necessarily better look at american pie that song is 10 minutes long and i think we pretty much got the point by verse two right also if the music died how are you singing did it die because you rung the life out of it don mclean Some, something is not adding up only three people have won the general field in one night. Shout out Mariah and Adele, okay? And the big four that we're looking for are best album, best record, best song, and best new artist. 87% of you are the best. Oof, that was good, bravo, Sarah. Question eight. The largest airport in the US by size is in the same state where which of the following movies takes place? Big. Dumb and Dumber, super bad. The largest airport in the US by size is in the same state where which of the following movies takes place? Big, Dumb and Dumber, super bad. Not the busiest, the largest by size. Now I think the most important thing about an airport is do they have a Shake Shack and how close is the rideshare pickup to the arrivals terminal? Like these are the things that I need to know. But for this question, Hopefully, you figured it out by now, and it looks like a lot of you have, that Denver, Colorado hosts the biggest airport, and it's also the only one that serves as the setting of the 1994 buddy comedy about, well, yeah, Dumb and Dumber. 92% of you are quite the opposite of that title, and we're moving on to question nine. All of the following are true of the actress born with the last name Rustin, except she was born in Belgium. She suffered from edema as a child. She began studying ballet in London. All of the following are true of the actress born with the last name Rustin, except she was born in Belgium. She suffered edema as a child. She began studying ballet in London. I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I know a famous actress named Rustin. You know, this is the thing with actresses. You cannot trust them. They're always changing their names, always. And constantly putting on clothes that aren't theirs, pretending to cry, you know, and then we reward that behavior by giving them tiny little statues. Enough is enough, actresses. Enough is enough. Audrey Hepburn, Audrey Hepburn was born Audrey Kathleen Rustin. See, that's easier to say in Belgium, but she started studying ballet in Amsterdam before moving to London. Yeah, that was tricky. That was tricky. 81% of you got it. And I hope you're ready to move as well because it's already time for the final question. Question 10. To the nearest whole number, how many weekends are in a millennium? 5,214, 52,143, 521,439. To the nearest whole number, how many weekends are in a millennium? 5,214, 52,143, 521,439. 521,439 weekends. Yeah. 
thousands of weekends in a millennium. And Am I right? I'm right. We need a three-day weekend, you know? One, one day for rest, one day for fun, and one to do all the tedious stuff, like errands and cleaning. But wait. No, no, that is still not enough, okay? What about like a fourth day for catching up on social media? On display, okay? But, but why stop there? Five days of weekend is what we deserve, yes. Yes, a five day weekend should be the norm. I want a day just for contemplating my existence. Now, if you do the math, and frankly, I'm not gonna, there are 52,143 weekends in a millennium, sheesh. That is, a, that is a lot of brunch that many of you could probably afford yourselves because maybe you just won display trivia? Shout yourselves out in the chat if you did. 447 winners tonight. What are those scores? You came, you slayed, you displayed your knowledge, and you got paid. Who says this with me at home now? I really want to know. Throw something in the chat if you like say this slogan, this tagline that we've created with me every night. And also say those scores. Bronze medalist got a nine out of 10. Ash Cower got a 10. Oh no, study one. Uh, dude on wheels got a six out of 10. Most arrow, nine out of 10. A Brune got a seven out of 10. Friends, killing it. Nunes Wendy, seven. Cowpode got a 10 out of 10. Fryer got a nine. So close, you were so close. That's okay. Come back tomorrow. We do this every single weeknight. If you need that extra answer, right? Maybe question eight would have made the difference for you. Come, come to the pre-show. We start that at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. I give you a free answer before trivia. But if you don't need it, that's fine. We don't have to spend extra quality time together. I get it, I get it. You can just tune in for trivia. Lang Louis says, congratulations. And to the rest of you, I'll see you tomorrow on display. <laughs>